So my name is Paige May. I am an organizer here in Chicago. I do a lot of organizing around anti-blackness and particularly police violence, mostly through a group called We Charge Genocide. And, and racism itself is, I think, a word that people get confused about what it actually means. And I understand racism as when people have prejudice against you because of your race. And they also have institutional power, right? Like they can take that prejudice and use it and actually make your life harder because they control businesses, because they control capital, because they control government. So that's racism, is when you use your personal prejudice combined with your power to make all people of color struggle. Anti-blackness, I think, is something a lot deeper than that. It's not saying that you, person of color, mean less to me or mean less than I. It's saying that you are not a human, right? Anti-blackness positions black people constantly outside of who we even understand to be human. So when we talk about things like, you know, black people need human rights, I think that we're missing the point that it's not that we're being denied rights and that we just need access to them, it's that we're not recognized as human. So I think the perfect example of this is when Mike Brown gets killed, right? And um, and you have Darren Wilson explaining why he did that and he said he looked like a demon. Right? He wasn't a person, he was a demon. And that is anti-blackness. So my relationship to blackness is definitely complicated. So I'm originally from rural Vermont and I come from an interracial family. And so my mom's side is white and my dad's side is black. And both sides actually claim Native American ancestry in ways that I think are kind of complicated. So growing up, I never identified as black really. I would identify as biracial. Sometimes I would identify as Native American because I was told that was the largest percentage. And it wasn't, really until I started to get older, I wanted to embrace blackness but felt so isolated that I didn't, I felt like I kind of needed permission or something from a black community that I didn't know, that I didn't have in Vermont. Yeah, my family, um, it's been hard. I think in some ways, right, they, most of my family is still in Vermont. And so as I've been thinking more about blackness and claiming this identity of black, I've been able to do it sort of slowly, uh, sort of slowly exposing them to the changes that I'm going through. And I think, um, I think they find it interesting for sure. I think my family finds it a little scary in some ways, right? The, especially the black side. Um, the, the black side sees themselves as sort of escaping from um, from having to think about what it means to be black in America uh, because Vermont is so white. Now I think a lot of my family thinks I'm, I'm making my life more complicated than it needs to be. But I also see a lot of pride um, and, and especially the more organizing that I do. Yeah, so I, I see some resistance. I think most of it comes out of like, you know, my white mother being afraid that I'll hate her and my black family being afraid that I'll hate myself too much. Um, yeah, which is okay. Like, we, we'll get through it. <laughs>